Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Gamma and AIA press U.S. Senate leadership for floor action on FAA reauthorization. NASA astronaut and crewmate safely return to Earth from ISS. And SpaceX recovers payload fairings using parafoils. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson, it's June 8th, and this is Airborne Unlimited. Gamma and the Aerospace Industries Association joined together to call on U.S. Senate leadership to consider a bill authorizing programs of the FAA as soon as possible. Congress has not enacted a multi-year authorization bill for the FAA since 2012, and that bill expired almost three years ago. Since September 2015, the agency has been working under a series of short-term extensions, including the current measure expiring on September 30, 2018. Enacting a multi-year reauthorization for the FAA is important because it provides clear legislative direction, stability, and predictability for government and industry. Last year, the Senate Committee on Commerce, Science, and Transportation bill included important reforms to the FAA's certification and regulatory procedures and streamlined the agency's international leadership and engagement. These provisions, many of which are also addressed in the House bill, are needed today for U.S. aircraft manufacturers and their suppliers to remain competitive in a fast-changing and increasingly competitive global marketplace. The House recently passed this version of a long-term reauthorization bill, and so it's imperative for the Senate to complete its consideration of Section 1405 as soon as possible to allow adequate time for House and Senate negotiators to reach a final conference agreement by the end of September. After the break, Frontier Pilots caution customers were 100% ready to strike this summer. The dream is real. A truly affordable personal jet aircraft. The Subsonics Personal Jet Kit is priced at only $42,000. Kit Plus Engine is still under $100K. Add instruments, upholstery, and paint, and you're flying. It's time to put your money where your bucket list is. Learn more at sonicsaircraft.com. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, Airborne Unmanned, the AMA Drone Report, our website or podcast, just email to news-by at aero-news.net. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. Frontier Airlines pilots are cautioning customers that the threat of a strike at the airline is a very real possibility. Alpa said that after more than two years of unproductive negotiations, pilots have asked to be released from federal mediation. If approved by the National Mediation Board, it could start a 30-day cooling-off period, after which pilots could strike. Last year, 100% of the pilot group voted in favor of authorizing a legal strike. The last major U.S. pilot strike was in June 2010. Airbus is organizing an after-work catch-your-dream-job recruitment drive dedicated to innovation at its Toulouse site on June 20th. A large number of positions will be on offer in digital sectors, notably involving the cloud, big data, cybersecurity, the Internet of Things, as well as in the area of artificial intelligence. The vacancies in France are for young graduates, baccalaureate plus five years level, with two or three years successful experience, as well as more experienced, talented professionals. Afghan Air Force C-208 aircrew members conducted their first emergency combat airdrop mission, bringing ammunition to Afghan National Police and citizens fighting the Taliban in the Badashan province, June 1, 2018. The success of this emergency combat airdrop proves the Afghan Air Force's ability to respond quickly to emergent requests and deliver necessary supplies to support the Afghan National Army, police, and citizens as they combat the Taliban. The EAA and Balloon Federation of America recently announced a memorandum of understanding that expands the organization's joint efforts to bring the possibilities of flight to more people. 
The agreement formalizes a relationship between the organizations as they promote and encourage flying activities. It will also include initiatives ranging from membership growth and communications to advocacy and youth activities. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. Three members of the International Space Station Expedition 55 crew, including NASA astronaut Scott Tingle, returned to Earth Sunday after 168 days of living and working in low Earth orbit. Tingle, astronaut Norishi Kanai of Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, and cosmonaut Anton Shkoplarov of the Russian space agency Roscosmos, landed at 8.39 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, southeast of Jezgazkan in Kazakhstan. The mission was the first for Tingle and Kanai, and Shkaplarov now has logged more than 532 days in space on three flights. The crew completed hundreds of experiments, including materials testing, a study of the effect of microgravity on the bone marrow, and research into plant growth in space. They also welcomed four cargo spacecraft, delivering several tons of supplies and experiments. Tingle and Kanai ventured outside the station on separate spacewalks to perform work on parts of the Canadarm2 robotic arm. They also participated in dozens of educational events as part of NASA's Year of Education on Station. Shkeplerov conducted a record-setting spacewalk in February with fellow cosmonaut Alexander Mazurkin to replace an electronics box for a communications antenna on the Zvesta service module. The spacewalk timed out at 8 hours and 13 minutes, the longest in Russian space program history. After these messages, SpaceX recovers payload fairings using parafoils. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. Welcome back. SpaceX has released high quality photos of the recovery of the payload fairings that protected the Iridium-6 GRACEFO satellite during launch on May 22nd. Via Twitter, SpaceX said that Falcon 9 fairing halves deployed their parafoils and splashed down in the Pacific Ocean last week after the launch of Iridium-6 GRACEFO. Closest half was about 50 meters from SpaceX's recovery ship, Mr. Steven. The launch parameters did not allow for the recovery of the Falcon 9 booster that carried the satellite into orbit. The recovery is another step towards more complete reusability of SpaceX rocket components. The technology may also be used to recover orbital upper stages on future missions. It may also be possible for SpaceX to capture payload fairings before they land in the water. Building the payload fairings is a labor and time intensive process, and the ability to reuse the fairings will help SpaceX decrease turnaround times and accomplish a more aggressive launch schedule. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, alternating with Airborne Unmanned on Tuesday and the AMA Drone Report each Thursday. Additional breaking news bulletins may be posted for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-niche.net. Have a great weekend and see you Monday.